welcome to the doldrums. Less than five knots of wind every day, and then big squalls, four or five squalls during the night. It's been testing. Um, you can see the sun's going down here. It's day 10 from Hawaii to Vanuatu. And you can see the squalls up ahead. You can see our makeshift spinnaker pool. <laughs> Um, doing a terrible job. It's a constant just flapping, cracking. We're making about two and a half, three knots, <laughs> which is, um, in, I think it's amazing on an old boat like this, doing those sort of speeds. It's, you can see like the, the water out the back here. You know, we're cruising along quite well, considering the boat's 15 ton. We've got this head sail up and we're doing nearly three knots, so pretty happy with that. The watercolour here is just incredible still. Like, you can't really see the watercolour, but it's just bright blue. It's just... This is day 10. We're just sitting back here in the doldrums, bouncing along at three knots. Um, testing my patience, I guess, but you know, I'd rather be out here than in the rat race, working in an office somewhere or working full stop. And this is free, and we're traveling around the world. Next stop, we're, we're going to an untouched island. There's less people be on this island than people have been to to the moon and out of space it's no one's gone this island every two years we have a, a science team or something goes there once every two years um, it's one of the most untouched atolls in the world most of the coral unfortunately in the world is dead or dying there's not many reefs including the great barrier reef which is disappearing at an alarming rate so i'm really looking forward to seeing some of these beautiful coral atolls before it's all too late sad but true um, so that's what we've got tonight coming this stuff here in the distance will pass over this way and we're gonna have this I would say some really nice stars and blue sky tonight this more storms building up will work the way around and end up in front of us like these ones here Yeah, watching the weather is important of course there's not much you can do about it when you're out here we're out i think uh about a thousand miles in each direction two thousand miles or something there's uh there's nothing not, no one out here is going to help you the rule is you see a squall coming you should pull down the big sails and get ready with a small jib or a storm sail as the, as the squall hits but what we've been doing which isn't the right thing but uh, the amount of squalls we had I mean yeah we get a bit of wind but we're so fast we're on action we're ready here comes the squall it comes in if it's 20 knots we can keep the sail up 25 knots it's like oh if it gusts for 25 knots Aaron drops the halyard I'm on the bass but we pull it down and the jib goes up within about 10 seconds um, there's a bit of a risk there because you're now dealing with pulling a massive sail down when it's really windy when you could do all of that stuff um, prior but we do want to get back to Australia and the difference of having a jib up you know you're talking two and a half three knots compared to six seven eight knots um, so yeah we like keeping this big sail up hopefully it's gonna last us I've repaired it three or four times the sails are in all right condition but the boat's been nice. It's a really safe, beautiful boat. The sky's gonna do some pretty amazing things tonight. And the colors on the ocean, so pretty. It's so nice out here. 
Look at these colors here. So you got like a, the sunset going down, a bright blue. The ocean is this orange and then dark blue over here and then black through here where the squall's happening. All black here and then bright blue. And And man, this self steering, I mean, it's barely, it's got to be three, th less than five knots, yeah? Four, f possibly five knots, right? And this thing, then five knots is wind, look. She's steering the boat and she will do all day, all night, all the next day, and all the way back to Australia. Um, I noticed the ropes were wearing on these pulleys here, the ropes were wearing and Aaron had to do a fix. Um, it was really my bad, I had the ropes really tight, um, thinking oh it needs to be really tight to, to have these minor adjustments. They're pretty slack right now and the boat's staying on a perfect course, it's actually better. So with these self steering, don't worry about them, the, uh, the lines being tight. Just let it relax and this monitor is just insanely good though. I can't say enough good things about it. You need to know how to sail well though. There's no, you can't just put this thing up, attach it to the tiller and go, yeah, that'll do us, that'll get us back to Australia. It won't. You need to know how to set sails and have the boat really well balanced. Um, I've found it really difficult with this massive gaff and balancing the boat. I've worked out what was going on and basically the out hole in the gaff, instead of the gaff being flat, the shape of the sail's flat when we're on a reach, it needs to be curved, a big belly in the mainsail so it spills the wind and we go forwards. If the sail's flat when we're on a reach, then the boat will want to go to windward. It'll just go into windward every time and it's, she can't, the, the sail steering can't, can't cope. So. The sail's right out, everything's relaxed, the top of the sail's luffing a little bit, spilling a little bit of wind. Um, and you've got the outhaul relaxed on this, on here, so this piece here is all the way, the foot's like this, comes in, so you've got this big, big belly in the sail rather than it being flat. And, um, and a massive head sail, and it, and it works really well. That sail's going to do that all night. I mean, what point do you put the motor on, right? I mean, look, it's just not even filling. That wind's just gone now. I'd say tonight we're going to end up being becalmed. There's in no wind at all. Get used to the noise on the boat or uh, the sail. We'll be sleeping on deck tonight. We we'll sleep up there. Day 10. At this speed, it's looking like it's going to take another 25 to 30 days um, to get to Vanuatu. And then from there, it's only five days to Namia and then five days to Australia. So we're pretty much home, really, once we get to Vanuatu. I say pretty much home, we've still got 30 days, I would say, so we're going to be out to sea this time for more like 30 to 40 days. Wow, that big swell came through there, just a big roller, and because there's no mainsail to keep us balanced and this head sail's doing nothing, it's just getting a bit, gets a bit rolly, but then she just settles down like that, so calm and perfect. So yeah, another 30 days of just loitering around, really just hanging back, talking with Erin and chilling out with her, sleeping. We do a lot of sleeping and yeah, we've got lots to talk about still. We get on really well, it's good. She's a good first mate. She appreciates it as much as I do, I think.
Alright. Happy sailing.